copyright is a thing that more relevant question to ask the foundation model builders like OpenAI, Anthropic, or Google, Gemini, or XAI, and less for a product company like ours. We announced publisher program. If we use a content from a particular publisher as a citation, we would share some of the ad revenue with them. There's one extreme of saying you should just never do any ads, but you gotta be reasonable. Like this is an expensive product to serve when we started doing pro version. They were like, I get access to all the cutting edge AI models through other other chatbots. I'm getting Google, like why should I come pay you? That was now like many hundreds of thousands of people are paying for perplexing. What I'm excited about is the transition from an answer engine to a action engine where it just like does stuff for you. And accomplishing that is gonna be even harder than answering any question. But if it can be done, your life will be like so easy. Everybody can live, feel like they're a billionaire and can live like a great life. Let's move on to discuss the controversies of perplexity. Actually, like Jay asked perplexity to give us some must ask questions for this interview. And both the GPT-40 and the Sonar Huge models came up with the same question at the top, which was, what's perplexity's view on the copyright issues that are raised by the media outlets like us? Look, I mean, it's, it's a complicated topic. And, and, and um, I, I would say that this is where like, you know, you really need to understand the distinction between companies that do pre-training and companies that only do post-training and build products. And companies that do pre-training are actually taking all the internet data and training a model to basically predict the next token, next word given the previous words. So in principle, they can replicate all the articles with the right prompt because the models have already memorized it. And that is a violation of copyright. If you can actually like reproduce verbatim some content, potentially it's a violation of copyright. It's, it's, it's yet to be like decided and that's the core issue between OpenAI and New York Times. In the case of perplexity, uh, we are only sourcing content like a search engine does. Yes, we are providing a summarized answer in addition to 10 blue links which is giving the links in the form of like citations and sources, but we are clearly attributing to the creator of the content, like, hey, your content was used here, for this sentence in the form of like, not just sources at the top, but even like footnotes at the end of every sentence. I would say that copyright is a thing that more relevant question to ask the foundation model builders like OpenAI, Anthropic, or Google, Gemini, or XAI, and, and like less for a product company like ours. We're clearly just like a reimagining the search engine experience and just using the models as tools rather than actually like in engines to reproduce content by themselves. It's essentially like giving people even more ability to like ask any question without any fear of judgment. You can ask anything, like any topic, anything, like literally. Sometimes I forget some basic things I've learned in my uh, school days where I, I don't no longer remember the difference between a DNA and RNA or like what exactly happens when like, like how do, you know, chromosomes work or proteins like work. And I forgot all of the basic biology sometimes. And I might go to perplexity and like read more about it. I would have had to go to Wikipedia and read everything from scratch and find exactly what I want. All that's like a lot more efficient with a product like perplexity. But don't you have to like share your profit with those content providers because you make ci citations for like each sentence? Yeah, that's why we, we, we announced a publisher program where we invited publishers to be part of the program so that if we, when, when we introduce advertising in our products and start making ad revenue per query, if we used a content from a particular publisher as a citation, we would share some of the ad revenue with them. And uh, that's a very meaningful way to like build a long-term relationship rather than aiming for short-term fixes like like paying a license fee for your content. Because, okay, what happens after, you know, we train all our models on your content? We might not need it anymore. But then that's, that's the problem. That's why like like this foundation model thing is a completely different discussion versus someone who's just like sourcing it and like citing it as a search engine. So you guys are like about to launch your first um, search ads through publishers program, right? Yeah. So how will perplexity search ads differ from like other search engines? Yeah, so um, I'll take the example of Google. Your advertisement is like a link. So you ask a query, sometimes some if there's a bunch of sponsored links, uh, an advertiser bid on those keywords that you typed in so that they get displayed as, as a sponsored link for that query. And if you click on one of those sponsored links, Google gets to claim credit for that referral traffic to the advertiser. And if you actually end up making a purchase on the on that you know vendor's link, Google's gonna get some cut out of the transaction too. So that's how they make money out of ads, and it's a huge source of revenue for them. And just just to give you like some numbers, close to two hundred billion dollars in revenue a year is being made through uh, search link click advertising for Google, and um, approximately seventy percent margins on that. 
So it's pretty insane in terms of how much profits are generated to that. But only like five or six percent of the search queries actually lead to this link click ads. So it's a very small percent of the user traffic, but they make a lot of money. How perplexity would do it is not in the link click way. Instead, when you ask a question on perplexity and get an answer, that you know you see a bunch of suggested follow up questions at the bottom. Those follow ups could be uh, sponsored questions. So, like, say you're asking a question about like what are the benefits of fish oil, and we tell you exactly how it's leading to like like a omega three acid supplements. The sponsored question could be a particular brand like bidding so that like they can be like, oh, what makes this brand like really good or something like that. And that's just a way for you to learn more about that brand when you're searching for something relevant to them. And um, we could do this targeting on their behalf to the user. And the user still decides if they want to click on the sponsored question or not. It's up to the user. And that way we can we can have like two different models where you just pay a certain fee for being displayed and you pay a certain fee if you're clicked on. And then you pay another fee if you're actually getting a referral link. And, it, and, and then if you get a transaction, you can have like different stages of advertising based on that, like what we allowed you to get us from a user in terms of whether just blind awareness or just like actual like reading or actual like referral traffic or actual conversion into a purchase. You can like build like different tiers of advertising revenue for that. So does that mean Perplexity will prioritize those contents from the publishers who join the publisher's program and like start excluding the others? No, that, that's not what it means. None of the ads or publisher program will compromise in terms of how uh, we use like what sources for what queries and how the answers are structured. Even for the sponsored questions, the answers are still going to be unbiased. It's just that the questions are biased and that's okay because uh, we're just like encouraging you to learn more about something. You can choose to ignore it still. Uh, I think like there's one extreme of saying you should just never do any ads, but you got to be reasonable. Like this is an expensive product to serve. We're actually already like serving at a loss every year. So at some point we do want to be profitable and we want to make money so that we, we want to be in this business for like decades. Like, like there is a reason that nobody has been able to compete with Google except like few minor like exceptions because it actually takes like a lot of infrastructure costs and like business models and ads to be built to be like profitable and use all those profits to keep making the infrastructure better and uh, if you want to stay long term here not just be a product that's forgotten after a few years uh, a sustainable scalable business model also needs to be built and we think like this is a really nice sweet spot where users don't feel like answers are getting compromised and we still can like potentially help brands reach more users through a new product. See, brands have like a lot of marketing budget. They can continue to spend it on Google or Instagram or Neighbor and so many other like like platforms, YouTube. But when a new platform like ours emerges, where like, it's a completely different way of consuming information online, uh, brands can also rethink how they advertise too. So we want to work together with brands and I think when advertising is completely relevant and personalized to the user or to the query, it ends up being like really useful sometimes. Like I've purchased a lot by just looking at Instagram like sometimes and you know it, it, it actually works so if we can do it in the right way with good amount of relevance I think ads can actually work how much of perplexity's revenue like do you expect to come from the search ads I don't know today we haven't even launched it yet right now like majority of our revenue is just coming from subscriptions consumer and enterprise subscriptions and then we also have like a small growing revenue from our API but ads is something we haven't even launched yet so we, we have no idea like how much what percent of our revenue is going to be from ads I think we need a little more time to gauge and, and like you know experiment here I mean my predictions would be completely off that's the problem <laughs> like it's very difficult to make a prediction today and mm -hmm. and I'm completely happy if consumer subscription still keeps growing and like you know I'm First of all, the core idea that like people would even pay for a search was like ridiculed when, when we started doing a pro version. They were like, I get access to all the cutting edge AI models through other, other chatbots. I'm getting Google, like, why should I come pay you? That was, you know, the thing everybody told us. And now like many hundreds of thousands of people are paying for perplexity. To the extent that Google is considering launching a paid version of their search engine, like at least I saw a rumor on Financial Times, what, what, like that was published like many months ago. Google was considering launching a paid version of Google. So at least we are like making like even the biggest juggernaut like rethink some of its practices. And it's very interesting. So regarding ASIC, I, not, I just don't have a clearer sense today.
cost is like one of the biggest problems that the AI search engines are facing right now. And like stability AI or like inflections, they've all been facing like those financial struggles. So like some are even talking about like AI bubbles and pointing out that the, like how the costs are high, but the profits are so low. So is Perplexity like experiencing any challenges in maintaining its service right now? No, we're not experiencing a crisis. Uh, by, by any means we are a lot of we're very well funded and like we have a lean company culture and like small team and like uh, constantly squeezing out more and more efficiency in our infrastructure to like lower costs of serving the product and so on but we're also not profitable yet we are at least like what i would say is unlike the foundation model companies that also have their own products because we don't train these models and they bear the costs of training them we get to like like benefit from all the competition that's happening on that layer and the reduction in the prices and tokens cost and like models are getting cheaper smarter so whatever is costing us to serve even our current users today it's only going to get cheaper 10x cheaper like like even like less than six months and even better in, in, a, in a time span of like two to three years. You can imagine all these things getting cheaper. At the same time, we would have a probably an order of magnitude more users too. So we, we got our time to like really figure out like how to charge users more in like creative ways without actually incurring more costs on serving it. I think right now we're hyper-focused on growth. Getting more users, the most important thing for us today and um, driving efficiency in the business, both operational expenses and capital expenditures is something that we're, we're aware of it and we are like constantly doing what we can, but we're not like keep treating that as a number one priority today. How many users do you have in South Korea? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but we're, we're still growing here. It's not still as, as big a product as it is in the rest of like the world, like US, but that's exactly why, you know, we are working with SKT and like, giving this partnership. It's time to wrap up. So what is the ultimate vision that you have for the future of Perplexity? Yeah. So today Perplexity is an answer engine. And I think if you're not even done accomplishing that, like there's still like a lot of questions that we don't give good answers to. And so like just doing the other work is going to take a few years. Uh, what I'm excited about is the transition from an answer engine to a action engine where it just like does stuff for you. And um, like like you might be doing your research on like what to buy and then it's let you buy it. Uh, and I think that'll become the ultimate like super assistant app and like um, it can do anything, whatever you ask it to be. And accomplishing that is gonna be even harder than answering any question because entropy, the amount of variations that exist in doing different tasks is so much. But if it can be done, your life will be like so easy, right? Uh, it's like, like everybody can live, feel like they're a billionaire and can live like a great life. And, uh, and doing it at a price that's affordable for everybody and um, bringing it like widely, you know, giving access to almost everyone on the planet to such powerful technology uh, is what we would love to accomplish. And the last question, it's actually like our, my personal question. One of our videos that which had the most views on were about the Indian origin Silicon Valley leaders, Sundar Pichai, Satya Nadella, like you. So why do you think like there are so many Indian origin leaders in Silicon Valley right now? Like definitely good education as part like Indian culture values education a lot. For example, Sundar and I come from pretty much the same city in the background and like, like the education and the values of like trying to constantly like improve yourself contribute to it beyond that it's all like diff different people accomplish things in different ways like you know i think satya and sundar are more in the product management category whereas like i'm more a researcher turned entrepreneur and um i think common aspects are just like the determination and drive to improve yourself discipline to work hard and, and keep upskilling yourself not being satisfied with where you are and um like just the core foundations are strong if you have a good education. All these things contribute well. I was asking this question because we Koreans are also very diligent and yeah. they, we're very hardworking. We're yeah. very, we, we are very skilled, but it's quite hard to find those like Korean leaders in Silicon Valley. So I was like wondering about the difference between them. I mean, 100 percent, that would be look, I, I don't think like it should just be India or like any other country. I think it would be amazing if Korean Americans do great and there are a lot of Korean Americans working in Perplexity too, and then uh, many other companies I know, and like I'm sure, like you know, they all go on to have great careers. It always takes like like a few people to like sort of break all the barriers and get to the top, and then they set a standard and example, and like that inspires more people to try. It's always hard for the first 
success but once it sets an example like you can start seeing the ripple effects like before Sa- sundar or satya uh, it's not like indians had a lot of like ceos or top tech companies either but now that they've created that sort of uh, example like you know many more people are coming in that sort of footsteps so they've like conducted themselves to the highest standard great reputation all that helps a lot in in you know, building trust so i'm sure like if a few koreans are successful it's going to create like a new trend